There's this less known case in the UK called the Cosford incident that bears a striking similarity to a most famous sighting in Belgium and other UFO sightings. It's worth comparing. What they all have in common are triangle UFOs. Let's explore. Hi everyone and welcome to Project Blue Book, your place for the exploration of all things unidentified. I am Thor and thanks for tuning in. At about 1.15 in the morning on March 31st, 1993, dozens of sightings across Western Britain had eyewitnesses in multiple locations describing triangular shaped UFOs moving across the sky at incredible speeds. The Ground Zero location was Cosford, West Midlands, in the beautiful rolling English countryside northwest of Birmingham. Sightings ranged from the Midlands and all the way to Wales. The most intriguing accounts came from Royal Air Force personnel at Cosford and Shawbury Air Bases. Given they reporting the greater weight of professional airmen assessment, avoiding nonsensical dismissal like a weather balloon or military flares. They were considered solid sightings because when an Air Force captain says it was triangle shaped with no propulsion and traveled at speeds with velocity that defies any known man-made machine, that kind of statement coming from an Air Force person is noteworthy. Nick Pope was in charge of investigating the incident as the lead analyst at the Ministry of Defense. He ran the UFO reporting and investigative programs at MOD between 1991 and 1994, so this occurred at the pinnacle of his reign, so to speak. My speculation is this likely became the case that turned a young Nick Pope from a natural skeptic to a person convinced of the merit and reality of UFOs. He said the object was operating in UK air defense base without being detected on radar. That made it a national security threat and worth investigating. He was wrongly and immaterially accused of overinterpreting and leading witnesses to fit a pattern, but the accounts and eyewitnesses each speak for themselves, including police and military, independently, and their stories can be corroborated. They were independently recorded in multiple jurisdictions, apart from the Pope interviews. What eyewitnesses described at first were three lights forming a triangle, humming stationary in the sky above Cosford Air Base. A meteorological officer at Shawbury saw the object lowered to the ground, exposing it not as three lights, but as a solid triangular object, hovering as close as 200 feet to the ground, projecting a low frequency and uncomfortable humming sound, like the penetrating gut sound of a bass speaker when you stand too close to it at a concert. He estimated its size close to a Boeing 747 double-decker or a Hercules 7130. The object kept scanning the ground with what looked like a searchlight, rapidly moving back and forth as if in search of something. He saw it retract its lights as if it were a physical object and then take off at lightning speed, much faster than a fighter jet, said the Royal Air Force officer. Other eyewitnesses who saw it at distance described two or three lights streaking across the sky with a luminous vapor trail following, including a husband and wife team on a farm, adding this peculiar oddity to their account. Their cows had huddled together in the middle of the field, all facing each other, a behavior they never exhibited ever before, almost like ostriches sticking their heads in the sand in order to see nothing and know nothing. The first sighting had actually taken place the night before in Somerset at 8.30 p.m. on March 30th. The witness was a police officer who together with a group of Boy Scouts had seen a craft looking like two congards flying side by side. The report kept coming. A couple saw and chased the craft to a field where they said it almost landed, describing it as 200 feet in length, and when they approached on foot, the craft disappeared, dematerializing before their eyes. 
From multiple eyewitnesses, we can gather a consistent description that the three lights described by others as high in the sky were sitting under the craft near each corner. Oddly, radar analysis from multiple tracking locations were inconclusive, either showing low signature anomalies or nothing at all. These sightings lasted for about six hours between the evening of March 30th and into the morning of March 31st, 1993. Exactly three years earlier, the evening of March 30th and into the morning of March 31st, 1990, Belgium's most famous UFO sighting occurred, and it unfolded almost exactly the same way. A triangle-shaped UFO appeared scanning lights over the countryside as if looking for something. It, too, had three lights on each corner, according to the eyewitnesses. This one was validated by radar and the Belgian military sent two F-16 jets to intercept the UFO. The Air Force scramblers found nothing in the skies above Belgium, but reported seeing a laser beam near the ground in the countryside. The F-16s attempted nine separate intercepts. Each time they lost sight of the triangle UFO. They were detected on radar, however, and this time there's video. A Belgian Air Force personnel describing lights combining into triangles and a triangle rendezvousing with another triangle to form a dual triangle reminds us of the police officer's report describing two Concords side by side in England three years later. The reports kept coming, so much so that police officers from four police stations at a distance of over 10 miles from each other simultaneously went to investigate and independently observed a slow hovering craft in the sky from four different vantage points. From the multiple accounts, a traffic pattern map was drawn, showing this Belgian located triangle UFO as an intentional and deliberate presence following a pattern with a purpose unknown to us. What their scanning of the ground signifies could point to a biological observation retrieval or monitoring while being seen either is of no significance to them or perhaps it is deliberate, calculated as part of a gradual reveal plan, a systematic conditioning of the human psyche to last for hundreds of years until we are deemed prepared and ready for a full-blown contact. No alternative explanations was ever offered to the sightings of the Triangle UFO not as an experimental military craft, not a drone, not a weather balloon, and not flares. There was no attempt to explain it away. Therefore, it remains exactly what it was described to be, an unidentified flying object in the shape of a triangle, the size of a large commercial aircraft, with three lights beaming from its underside, crossing the Belgian countryside. Since the 1990s, the sight of triangle-shaped UFOs has proliferated worldwide, including in Spain, 1998, and Brazil, 2012, culminating in the recently released U.S. Air Force footage through the handling of Jeremy Corbell, captured on video with night vision technology. There's even footage of a Cessna chasing some kind of a triangle in broad daylight. Interestingly, a triangle UFO has also been photographed from the International Space Station, from above down, which to no surprise does not show the lights positioned on its underside. Yes, the multiple photographs and videos shot over decades describing multiple sightings and encounters, they are all consistent. Another point of interest to come out of these sightings was an admission from the UK's Assistant Chief of Air Staff, a high-level position similar to an Assistant Joint Chiefs of Staff member in the US. He said, quote, In summary, there would seem to be some evidence on this occasion that an unidentified object or objects of unknown origin was detected operating over the UK and in UK's airspace, and the sightings would appear to be of considerable defense significance." End quote. What makes this quote controversial 
is that simultaneously the Ministry of Defence of Great Britain was feeding the public, the media, its own parliament, and presumably the Queen, the line that these UFO sightings didn't prove anything and were of no defence significance whatsoever. Our own Office of National Intelligence has, as of June 25, 2021, concluded otherwise. They do represent a concern to air defences of the United States, as well as a safety concern to civil aviation. They're therefore worth studying. You can watch and listen to this and other podcasts on Project Blue Book, your reliable source for exploring all things unidentified. Each day, let's practice compassion and kindness. And please subscribe. I am Thor, and thanks for listening. See you next time.